What, what do you have for us so far in terms uh, of the damages being awarded by this jury to E. Jean Carroll uh, because of uh, Donald Trump's uh, defamation against her? I mean, Jake, this is a significant win for E. Jean Carroll. The jury awarding her um, just shy of $100 million in this verdict. I'm going to break it down for you. They said that uh, E. Jean Carroll was injured as a result of Trump's defamatory statements. And for emotional harm, they're awarding her $7.3 million. For reputational repair, they're awarding her $11 million. And for punitive damages, that is the part that punishes Donald Trump. They are awarding $65 million. So my rough math there gets us over $80 million that the jury is awarding E. Jean Carroll. I mean, that is a significant win from her. Last year, the jury awarded her $5 million. This is just exponentially more. Um, you know, this is something that is the jury is sending a message to Donald Trump. I mean, the argument that Carroll's team has made, which this jury seems to have completely agreed with, is that the only way to stop Donald Donald Trump from repeating these defamatory statements is to hit him in the pocketbook, and that is what they've done. I mean, a significant victory for E. Jean Carroll, um, substantially more than she had asked for. Um, you know, she was seeking millions of dollars, and now they're returning this verdict of over $80 million. Jake? Yeah, $83.3 million. Your math checks out, Kara Scannell. We'll come back to you when you have more to tell us. Let's uh, bring in CNN legal analyst and former federal prosecutor Elliot Williams. All right, so let's just get your reaction. Uh, to these numbers, let me let me uh, remind folks what they are. Uh, the compensatory damages, all told, is 18.3 million dollars. That checks out to be 7.3 million dollars for emotional harm. They, the court, the, the jury found that he did in fact injure her, uh, and 11 million dollars uh, for reputational harm done to her. And then, so that's 18.3 million, which uh, is is less than Carol's attorney asked for. She'd asked for 24 million. Punitive damages, uh, $65 million. Explain, first of all, what, 65, what punitive damages means and whether or not that's a, that's a high figure for this trial. It, well, to start with the last question, it is a high figure. That's a lot of money for anybody, including Donald Trump. Now, when we talk about compensatory damages, you're paying someone back for something they've lost. And to your point about the fact that this was less than uh, A. Jean Carroll's folks had asked for, uh, it's hard to put a dollar amount on someone's suffering, but she, but she did. And they said, we think it's $24 million. They said here that it was you know, $7.3 million. Now, this question of punitive damages, that how do you deter someone or others like him from engaging in the same conduct? And you put a dollar amount on it and slap him with a big uh, amount of money. The challenge here with someone who's a billionaire or at least a hundred million, a multi- Whatever he is, what, right. Whatever he's very rich. in there he is, he's yeah. very rich. It's hard to put a dollar amount on, on his conduct that, that would actually deter him or anyone else. So they had to put a, a high dollar amount on. $83.3 million, that is a lot. Not as much uh, as Rudy Giuliani was ordered to pay those two election workers that he defamed, but still uh, quite a chunk of, of change. Um, do you think that there is grounds for an appeal? Will Donald Trump be able to say, uh, and his lawyers, like, this is too high, I didn't get a fair trial, et cetera? There are certainly grounds for an appeal. Everyone uh, who makes it through the legal system, Jake, is entitled to challenge a verdict that, or, or a dollar amount that's put against them. The, the problem is it's, it's substantiated. She, they laid out uh, during the trial what her injuries were, whether they were emotional, reputational, or whatever else. And punitive damages are hard to quantify, but... It makes sense for an individual who's who's a billionaire, or again, like I said, a multi or whatever he is. Yes, a lot of money. Eighty-three point yeah. three million dollars. If you're just joining us, uh, this was a second defamation trial. The first one, you might you might remember, a jury found that Donald Trump did sexually abuse uh, writer E. Jean Carroll at a Bergdorf uh, Goodman's uh, dressing room in the 1990s. They did find that previously and ordered him to pay five million dollars for for defaming her post-presidency. This trial was about defa his defaming of her while he was president in 2019, and the jury has just awarded E. Jean Carroll uh, $83.3 million. So Donald Trump is now, pending an appeal, ordered to pay her, I guess, $88.3 million if you had the $5 million that I assume he hasn't paid her yet. Uh, let's bring in CNN anchor uh, Caitlin Collins. Uh, Caitlin, before this trial, uh, I am one of the lucky few that actually uh, has 
uh, Truth Social, Donald Trump's social media website that, that he uh, founded um, back before Elon Musk took over Twitter. And if you just scroll through his feed, it is just, uh, you know, it's a, a direct tap into his brain, his id, and it's just post after post after post uh, attacking E. Jean Carroll, attacking the judge, attacking the case. This is before the verdict. So how is he going to react now? Uh, Jake, I'm told by a person familiar that Trump just boarded his plane here in New York. He had actually left the courtroom before this verdict came down. He is not in the room, was not in the room. His attorneys were, but he was not in the room as this was being read. And I would tell you, I would not want to be on that plane with him right now as he is finding out that this jury has decided he owes E. Jean Carroll, in addition to the five million that you already mentioned, another $83 million in damages here, Jake, because, you know, one sore point for him throughout this entire trial that you could see play out and something that the judge was pushing back against a lot was the fact that he didn't show up to the initial trial, which he says he did on the advice of a previous attorney, one who's no longer on his team anymore, I should note. And that was something they kept trying to bring up here. And the judge was saying, we're not deciding here if you if you sexually abused her. That is something that a jury already found you liable for. This is just about how much you owe. And obviously, there were questions of whether or not the tactics that they were using inside the courtroom were going to reduce what he would owe and what he would have to pay in the end. The argument that Eugene Carroll's attorney was making was that, you know, this is a really wealthy person and the way to kind of send a message to him is to choose really high damages, which, of course, the jury has delivered on here. But, Jake, after covering Trump for as long as I have, what I think of when I look at that $83 million number is this is a man who does have a lot of money. He does not like to part ways with that money, and he doesn't do so very easily. So the idea that E. Jean Carroll, something that has gotten under his skin ever since he was in office until his post-presidency, throughout these many trials, that he is going to owe her $83 million is not going to go over well with him. And, and how do you think that's going to manifest itself, Caitlin? Uh, what, what, is, what is next? I mean, obviously, we're going to see a lot of truth social posts. Uh, I imagine that's, that's an easy one to predict. Is he, uh, I mean, he's running for president. Is he, is he speaking anytime soon? Uh, is he, uh, does he have any planned interviews with any of the, the friendly outlets he tends to talk to? When are we next going to hear from him on this? Well, he has campaign events. I mean, he's supposed to fly to Nevada t tonight, I believe. He is still on the campaign trails. We've seen him balancing the courtroom and the campaign trail. I mean, in court today, he was still trying to speak up. He was mouthing words as his attorneys were speaking, talking about his denials here. And the crux of this, though, Jake, is these are for comments he made in 2019. That's what these damages are coming from. Obviously, as they played, Eugene Carroll's attorneys played in the courtroom as this trial was going on, the moment from the CNN town hall just back in May where they were arguing that, that he defamed her again, where he continued to lash out and speak out against her. And so I think the question and the argument that Carroll's attorney was making during this was make sure the damages are high enough to, to essentially stop him from what he's been doing. Does this 83 million number mean that to him? I don't know. I mean, it's, I think it's hard for people to imagine he'll stop talking about this and stop with the denials, but $83 million is a really high price tag. And it is indeed, and her attorneys asked for an unusually high punitive damage award, and I think it's fair to say uh, they got it from the jury. 